Hey, hey, thanks for tuning in to the Just Janice podcast. I am your host, Janice, and we know that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So in this joy-filled podcast, you're going to hear real-life stories from other believers. We're going to talk about the kingdom. We're going to magnify Jesus, and it's going to be awesome. So thanks for tuning in, and here we go. Hey, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Just Janice. I'm so excited for today's episode because this is a message that honestly has been burning in my heart for a long time, like several months. I can't give you an exact time frame, but it's just been burning on my heart for a few months. And it's all about this secret place and just feeling like this overarching message for the body of Christ to not abandon the secret place. So I was like, in prayer last year sometime, and I heard the Lord say that to me, don't abandon the secret place. And I've just felt the weightiness of that word so much in my life as I have a lot going on in my life with ministry and just life in general. I mean, as believers, we're called to be ministers of reconciliation wherever we're at. So whether I'm doing ministry with Stirred Up or I'm at my workplace or I'm at the grocery store, wherever I'm at, I'm called to be a minister of reconciliation, to carry the light of Christ everywhere that I go and just to carry him with me and to influence the world around me. And so just that weightiness of that word to not abandon the secret place has been so heavy on my heart because everything that I do needs to be from that place, from that place of intimacy with him and experiencing those moments of having those face-to-face encounters with him and having that time that's just set aside, set apart with him and him alone to just seek his face and to hear from heaven, to hear his voice, to know what he's saying, to know what he's saying for my life and for my community and for my church and my family and my friends and all those things. And so there's just such a beauty of the secret place that I I think that God is, not I think, I know God is calling us to that place. And so I would just want to talk about that today because it is it's it's a theme on the body of Christ. I just, I just can feel like it's a theme of the Holy Spirit right now, just calling people and beckoning us to that place. And so I have some scriptures that I'm going to read here in a second. But I want to share with you guys a vision, and I may have shared this in a previous episode. So if I did, I pray that it encourages your hearts again. And if I didn't, well, then you'll hear it for the first time. So I had this vision uh, while I was in prayer I don't know, last year at some point, I guess. And um, I have a hard time remembering when when exactly these things happen without looking back at my journals. But anyway, so in this vision, I had, I could see like the veil that was torn in two. And I'm going to read about that in a second um, in the book of Matthew. And I saw the veil that was torn in two. And I saw believers that were standing, like I could see people that would just stand on that veil that was torn in two, which was in the temple, and we'll read about that in just a second. It was in the temple, and it separated uh, the temple, the outer courts from the Holy of Holies, and that place of where only the high priest could go, and only once a year, and only after he was ceremonially cleansed, and like there was such strict, strict like criteria to even enter into that place, because if he had any sin and any any impurity inside of him, he could literally enter that place where the presence of God dwelled and fall dead on the spot. And so just that place of intimacy that like really people didn't know before Christ gave his life. And so we are going to read about that, the account of when Jesus gave his last breath and that veil was torn in two, symbolizing the fact that we now have have access to that place, to that holy of holies, to where the presence of God dwells. And we know like now God has called us his temples and his spirit dwells in us. If you're a believer, when you give your life to Christ and you're born again, his spirit takes up residence inside of you. And now you are carrying the Holy Spirit everywhere you go. And I think sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that, that the spirit of the living God is living inside of us. And that should affect change. That should look different. Like if you are a temple of the living God, the God who created the universe, the God who breathed stars into existence and he knows them by name. Like I've been meditating on the scripture in Psalms. It says that he knows every star by name. I've been thinking about that the last few days and just, just like God restore to me 
like the joy of my salvation and that awe and wonder and reverence of who you are, who you really are. And I feel like he's been doing that for me personally and just realizing his his majesty and his glory and who he is. And to know that the very spirit of the living God lives inside of me, like my life should look different. My life should look drastically different than it did before I knew him. And so uh, for me, with this vision of just seeing people that were standing there on the veil and knowing that we have access to that place now, but there was like a hesitation. And I don't know, you know, you can take this to the Lord yourself and find yourself in this vision if it applies to you, but, but just like this hesitation, and that could have been like just the fear of the unknown. Like, God, what if I step into that place? What is that going to look like? Because we don't know, like God calling us into those deeper places, into those deeper realms and deeper waters, like you can't see what that holds. And sometimes there is that that genuine fear of the unknown. And like, God, what is my life going to look like? What is going to happen to me if I allow myself to step into that place? And then sometimes it could just be pure ignorance. And I don't mean that word harshly at all, just, just truly not knowing like that that is accessible to you now. If you are a believer that you have access to that secret place, to that intimacy, that true deep intimacy with God in that holy of holies. And then, you know, there are other people who just don't want it. And, you know, that's just a sad reality. I don't understand it, but there, there just are people who are content with where they're at. And, um, you know, and I pray like for anyone I know that's in that situation, or if that's you, that, that God would draw you into that place. If that's not even a place that you've ever thought of wanting to be, uh, in deeper intimacy with him, that he would cultivate that, that desire inside of you, because there's nothing I can say or do to persuade you of that. That's only what, (laughs) that's only a work that the Holy Spirit can do. And so I want to read this passage out of Matthew, and then I'm going to go into Psalms 91 a little bit, and then we'll just see what happens here. So, This is Matthew 24, and I'm going to start reading at verse 45. It says, Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. So at this point, Jesus is hanging on the cross. He has gone through the mockery. He's gone through the flogging. He has had the hair ripped out of his beard. He has been ridiculed and just mocked. And oh my goodness, like if we could just truly grasp what Jesus suffered willingly, The Bible says that Jesus willingly endured the cross and scorned its shame because of the joy set before him. And I want to tell you today that you are the joy. You are the joy that was set before him. And there's a there's a phrase that says when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. And I think sometimes we forget that that then that other there's another saying too that says like if you were the only person on the earth, Jesus still would have went to the cross for you. And it's so true. And I think sometimes we we forget about the magnitude of what Jesus did, or we just overgeneralize it. And we're like, Jesus died for the sins of the world. And he did, but he died for you personally. And he went through everything that he went through for you personally, not just for humankind, you know, as a whole, it, it, he did it for intimacy with you because he wanted that intimacy restored that was stolen in the garden that was stolen when Adam and Eve were deceived and he the Bible says Jesus was the second Adam that he came and he restored that place of intimacy with the father and so I just want to encourage your hearts with that before we continue on here that here he is at the cross he's endured this he willingly gave it we know before he was even arrested and he was taken to trial and all of those things that the Bible says he was in the garden of Gethsemane and that he was pleading to the father. He was in such anguish that he was literally sweating blood, sweating blood. I can't even comprehend that. I've never been to that point of anguish in my life where I've sweat blood, but he was sweating blood because he knew what laid before him. And he said to the father, he was praying to the father, God, if there is any other way, if there's any other way this can be accomplished, let it be. But even so, not my will, but yours be done. And ultimately, that was the will of the Father for Jesus to go to the cross and and to die for our sins. And as we are even entering into this season of Easter and and all of this, like I just pray that our hearts would truly recognize and appreciate the, the sacrifice and what Jesus went through for us. And I don't think that there's ever a way that we could fully comprehend it, but I do pray that we would comprehend it. 
in a greater way and just live our lives from a place of knowing the sacrifice that he gave and being willing to be living sacrifices for him. We know the word says that we are called to be living sacrifices. So he's, you know, there are times where people are called to be martyrs and, but a lot of times we're not called to that extreme, but we are called to live for him. And I heard a saying a couple of years ago and it said, um, basically it said, a lot of us question whether or not we would be willing to die for him. But the question that was imposed was, how can we even get to that place if we're not even we're willing to live for him? And so it's just really, really been just my own my own perspective and my own thought of asking myself, like, okay, would I be willing to lay down my life for Christ? Like, that's that's an extreme thing that most likely I will never have to face. But what I will have to face every single day is the question of, will I be willing to live my life for him? Will I be willing to be a living sacrifice for the God who gave everything for me? And so I'm going to continue reading on here. Uh, oh my God, I only got like one verse read, but this is, I just, I love the word of God. So, okay, I'm in verse 46. It says, in about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on the reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. So in that moment, he yielded up his spirit and he died. And then in verse 51, this is, uh, uh, this is just so powerful. And I think like, you know how sometimes people ask, like, if you could go back in history and you could view, like, be there at any point of, uh, of history to just relive it or to live it out or whatever, what would you choose? And I've always thought it would be really cool to live, uh, to be present, like on the day of creation, to, to just be there, to marvel at God breathing and speaking these things into existence. And, and I've always thought that would be my answer. And then I went to the Creation Museum down in Kentucky and they had like a four, um, what do you call it? Like a 4D movie or whatever experience where you could watch creation. Uh, literally, this is just on a, on a, <laughs> like a screen. And I was so overwhelmed just in that, like, I was like, okay, Lord, I might change my answer for that question because I don't know if I could take it. Like it was so overwhelming to me to watch just a, a reenactment of what it would have been like for creation to, to, you know, come into play. And so, but I, I still really do think that would be my answer. I just think that would be uh, incredible. But even today, as I was reading this and thinking about uh, what I'm getting ready to read, I thought, you know what, this would be like in my top answers of what I would love to have witnessed firsthand experience with my own eyes to witness this next part that I'm about to read in scripture happen. Okay, so it says in verse 51, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were split and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Okay, so that whole last part there is just crazy to me. And I'm not even going to get into that because there's so much, so much that we could, that could be said in all of these, these verses that I've read. But I really just want to, I want to land in verse 51 where it says, Behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And so I have here in my footnotes that the veil was a 30 foot by 60 foot veil. 30 feet by 60 feet, and it was as thick as a man's palm. So seriously, like, just hold your hand out right now and look at the, at, at your palm and how long it is. And imagine that the veil was that thick. It was a thick, thick veil that, like I said, separated the Holy of Holies from the outer courts and, or from the I'm actually going to read my footnotes. I just noticed that my Bible has some footnotes on this, and I, I think it's great. I love, 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 love my study Bible, and I love just all these extra little, like, nuggets of wisdom that someone else took the time to put in here, and so I will read it and glean from it. So it says, the veil of the temple was the heavily woven 
curtain that hung between the holy place and the most holy place. So actually the outer courts were further out, but so the holy place from the most holy place. Its presence was a continue a continual reminder of the separation between mankind and God. And it says the author of Hebrews states that the veil represented Jesus's body. So you can look up Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. The veil signified the removal of the barrier between God and anyone who would accept Jesus's sacrifice. Hebrews 4, 16 and 6, 19. So you guys can look those up um, if you want to. But, oh, that is so, so good. And, and that is honestly the biggest point of the whole message of what I'm even sharing about the secret place and about that holy of holies that we now have access to. Like, I just wish every believer, including myself in greater measure, would comprehend what that meant when that veil was torn in two and what that access, that access that was granted to us that day when Jesus gave his life willingly, that we can have that place of intimacy with God, that we can have that place everywhere we go. And that has just been something that I I feel like I will preach until the day God calls me home is the fact that God has that for you, that God has that place of intimacy for you. And that is wherever you're at. That is not just on Sunday mornings, that that you have access to the God of the universe everywhere that you go, that there is there is something special about church. I don't want to diminish the the gathering of believers or diminish the significance of that because that is so important and it's crucial. It's biblical. The Bible says not to forsake the gathering of believers. But what makes a gathering of believers special is the fact that we're all temples of God gathering together, coming together to to use our gifts, to encourage one another, to build each other up, to to seek after God, to seek after his kingdom. So there is something special about church, but I don't want people to to fall into the deception that that's the only place that God is, that you can't access him outside of Sunday mornings. And so whether you are at the gym or you're in your car or at the grocery store, like I've said, you have access to the God of the universe. And so my prayer for all of all of you is that you would access that place more frequently, that you would not abandon the secret place, that same message that God gave me. That's a message for all of us that we would understand what it means to to have that secret place with him, that place where it's just you and him, forehead to forehead, nose to nose, breath to breath, that you would experience that intimacy with him. And so I'm going to read Psalms 91. And there's, a, there's other scriptures too about the secret place. Like I encourage you to delve into this topic more because honestly, it's it's something that that I would, I want God to reveal more of to you personally, because I don't have all the answers. I don't have everything that God wants to reveal in this short podcast. Like the, there's just no way, but I do believe that this is just kind of like a, just an introduction or a reminder to you of the secret place that it's there. It's accessible to you. And then God can take whatever this is, whatever this fire igniting is, uh, this igniting message, so to speak. And he can, drive it home to you in a deeper way than I ever could. So Psalms 91 one says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. So I love, love, love the scripture in it because it talks about dwelling in the secret place. And what does it mean to dwell, to abide, to abide, to abide. That is such a buzzword right now in the body of Christ. And we know that even Jesus, when he's talking in the book of John, about abiding in John 15, about abiding in the vine, that he's the vine, we are the branches, and we abide in him, we will bear much fruit, and that apart from him, we can do nothing. And we know that that truth, that truly, apart, apart from God, we can do nothing. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's just a fact. It's just the truth. And so remaining in him and, and remaining in him, what does that even mean? How do, what does it mean to dwell in the secret place, to abide in that place? And And for me, I just, I want that to be my life 24 seven, that that's just a place of consistency in my life that I'm in. And, you know, do our feelings and our circumstances always match up? No, but do I acknowledge the fact that God is present? He is living within me. He's surrounding me. He goes before me and he's behind me. Like I want that to be, that is my reality, but I want that to be 
just a deep-seated knowing inside of me that that is truth, that his word is truth, that in his presence is truth. And so that's, that's too just been, been something that I feel like I've been super passionate about reminding people lately is, is just the truth that we find in his word and in his presence. That in those two places, like those are our secret places. For me, you know, what that looks like is different. There are times when like when it's warmer out, I love going to my church and just sitting. We have a really nice yard at my church. And so I'll go and just sit on the hill behind my church and spend time with the Lord. A lot of times for me, it's jumping in my car and going for a drive. Like I, I love, uh, I love driving and that's just, just a personal place for me to spend time with the Lord or in my living room or whatever. And so I just want to encourage you guys as I close out this podcast um, close my Bible and close out this podcast to just make that time to be intentional with the Lord, to develop that secret place. And if that's something you have not experienced, if you've not ever done that, where you're like, I'm just setting aside this time with the Lord, where it's just me and him, where I just want to hear from him. I want to hear from heaven. I want to know what's on his heart. And I think a lot of times I'm not going to get into this too much, but a lot of times we are good about seeking the Lord when we need something or when it just you know, we're conditioned to do those things, like to, to seek him when we need things and when, and whatever. And that's important. He, that's, you know, he cares for us, you know, and the word says to cast our cares on him because he cares for us. And so there is a time and a place for that. But I just, I just so badly want to see the body of Christ, seek him and spend time in his presence just because they want to be with him, not just because we want something from him. And so I'm not going to get emotional. But I, that is just my desire in my heart for the body of Christ is to, is to do that, to seek his face just because we love him, not because we need anything from him. And we know obviously he is our ultimate source of everything. Everything we need is found in him, but just, just to spend time with him because we want to know what's on his heart, not just to share with him what's on ours, but truly just to hear from him and to be like, hey, God, what's on your heart today? What's on your heart for my life? What's on your heart for my community? What's on your heart for my church and all those things? And even asking him, like, show me how to pray for people. Show me, show me what, what you, whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to show me, take me into those deeper places, awaken my hearts, fill me with dreams and visions and, and, all of the things that you have for me. And I think that so often as a body of Christ, we live so beneath our inheritance and what Christ gave for us. And I love that the word of God says that eternal life is knowing him. And I think a lot of times we accept Christ and it's almost like, you know, I say this lightheartedly, but it's like fire assurance. So it's like, okay, as long as I know that I'm good and when I die, I will go to heaven. Obviously that's important. And our eternal security is so weighty and so important. But the Bible says that eternal life is knowing him. And that starts now. That starts on this side of eternity before we take our last breath on this earth. Like we can truly know him now. And I think, I don't know if people just aren't taught or if we're just, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that of why we live beneath our inheritance and why we aren't hearing the voice of God, but I think sometimes we just truly don't know that that's accessible to us. And so that's my heart. That's my mission is for people to learn and understand that eternal life is knowing him, that that can start now. That can start now with just acknowledging him, accepting him into your life, surrendering to him and just that full surrender. And that's what I see is we step into that place of, of stepping beyond the veil, so to speak, and stop like... I saw that in the vision of just like God beckoning us into that secret place of like, hey, like I see you standing there on the veil, but you can come in, you can come in. And so that is, that is just the cry of this podcast and just the cry of my heart in general is for people to experience that place of intimacy with God in deeper ways than they ever have before. And that's what I want for myself. That's not something that I like am preaching or teaching and, and, and like, you know, acting like I have all the answers or like I fully experienced it. Like I am such a a girl of like, God, I know that where I am with you is really good, but I don't want this to be where I'm staying. I want you to continue showing me more of who you are, taking me to deeper waters with you, taking me to deeper realms of intimacy with you, increasing my spiritual eyesight and my, my hearing. And, and I'm just declaring that over you guys today that 
that God would give you, like the book of Ephesians says, a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him and all of those things. We, we want these things because we love him and because we want to know him more. And so I'm going to go ahead and close out this podcast in prayer. Like I say, a lot of times, I guess I don't say this every episode, but, but the offer stands with every episode, regardless. If you guys have anything that I, that I've shared, if there's anything that I've shared that you guys want to talk more about, or if you are just like, I want prayer for that, I am available. You can connect with me on social media, uh, reach out to me. You can email me, whatever, and would love to talk with you and pray for you. And honestly, that's, that's the heart of this podcast is just to encourage you in the Lord, to encourage you with the word of God and to pray for you and just know that you are not alone in your walk with the Lord, that um, there are believers, not just me, there are other people in the body of Christ that just want to truly be that for you. And I think a lot of us, a lot of us have been hurt in the church and I've met so many people who've experienced that. And so I just, even right now, feel like I just want to say sorry on behalf of the body of Christ if you've been hurt by the church. But I also want to tell you that that is not God's heart and that is not how all of us are. Not everyone is walking in the flesh. And so uh, when we have people that are walking in the flesh, we get hurt. And so I just pray that for you if you're listening and you have been hurt by the body of Christ, that God would restore you and heal you and so that you can walk in the fullness of all he has for you. And so I'm going to go ahead and pray. Like I said, I'm available if you need prayer or if you just need someone to talk to, whatever, like that is what I'm here for. And that's why I do this podcast. Father God, I thank you so much for the opportunity to jump on this podcast, God, and just to share your word, to share the vision that you gave me. And God, I pray that you would take whatever I've spoken and that you would minister it to the hearts of the hearers today, God, that you would do whatever it is on your heart to do, Lord. And I just pray, God, for beckoning to deeper intimacy with you for all of us and myself included, God, that you would call us into that deeper place with you, God, that you would reveal more of who you are. God, I pray that you would just take us to those deeper places with you. God, I pray that you would ignite in us a hunger for your word and a hunger for your presence. God, I thank you for what you're doing in the earth. God, and I declare that we will be a part of it. God, that we would stay on fire for you. God, that we would live our lives from a place of first love passion. God, I praise you and thank you for who you are. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. The Just Janice podcast is part of the NRT Podcast Network. To find other great podcasts in the network, visit newreleasetoday.com. Be sure to connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Janice Podcast. 